Hello film fans and welcome to this episode of The Shilokian. Now recently I reviewed the classic BBC documentary series Walking with Dinosaurs and I said I really enjoyed it but of course Walking with Dinosaurs isn't the only episode in that particular series is it? There's Walking with Monsters and Walking with Man but there's also Walking with Beasts which is the subject of today's review. Now I must admit, as a child, I actually preferred this series to Walking with Dinosaurs. I watched it quite a lot. And, of course, when you go back to things that you enjoyed as a child, there's always the danger. Well, there's, t there's two dangerous things, really. There's either nostalgia goggles, which means that you rate it more high than it actually is, or you get a severe shock when you realise that your sort of childhood rose-tinted memories of this particular um, thing, whatever it is, that you may have enjoyed isn't quite as good as you expected it to be. So what did I think of it then? Well, first of all, um, there are a lot of similarities between Walking with Dinosaurs and Walking with Beasts, and I'm, I'm sure that doesn't come as a surprise to anyone watching. I mean, for a start, they're made by pretty much the same production team. They both have Kenneth Branagh as the uh, narrator, and, you know, they're just generally very similar. They have the same kind of mix of early CGI and animatronics as Walking with Dinosaurs did. And like Walking with Dinosaurs, the animatronics are pretty fantastic, and the early CGI is a bit... Eh, I mean, at least from a modern perspective, obviously, at the time, it was absolutely revolutionary. And... As the great Allosaurus said in um, a comment under my Walking with Dinosaurs review, uh, he pointed out that actually the movement of this early CGI is quite good. It looks pretty realistic. It's the lighting of, and the sort of you know the effects of skin and in this case obviously fur that hasn't quite um, well at this point anyway wasn't quite up to the standard it is in modern times. It doesn't look accurate for want of a better word. So aside from this, what did I think of it overall? Well, I was quite surprised because, as I mentioned in my Walking with Dinosaurs review, Walking with Dinosaurs um, follows the pattern of the Life series of documentaries, and it's no surprise that they decided to go with that. I mean, at the time, Life was the most successful BBC wildlife documentary series they'd ever made. Um, obviously now we've got things like Planet Earth and Blue Planet which kind of rival that, but at the time Life was pretty much the only thing they had to copy, so it's no surprise that it was, you know, what they went with. But what surprised me when I rewatched Walking with Beasts is that they didn't actually do that this time. If anything, they copied the only real alternative they had to the live series, which was Wildlife on One. Now, I don't know if anyone remembers Wildlife on One. I mean, I only ever saw it um, on YouTube. But it was very big in the 90s on the BBC. It was basically a um, weekly wildlife documentary that lasted about an hour and on BBC One, hence the term Wildlife on One. And they were normally narrated by David Attenborough and they could be about pretty much anything you wanted. Um, I saw several on things as diverse as dolphins in captivity, parrots. Um, what was the most... Oh, yes. The, I think the most famous thing they ever did was this absolutely brilliant um, documentary where they looked at baby iguanas and saw how you could learn things about what maybe baby dinosaurs had been like from studying obviously modern reptiles and there was this fantastic scene where the baby iguanas are chased by a basilisk lizard which is the famous uh, Jesus Christ lizard which can run along the surface of the water and obviously it runs fairly upright and so it looked a little bit like T-Rex and so it had this brilliant scene as this um, basilisk is tearing after these iguanas down a hill, which I always remember. Um, it's a shot from, I mean, for the time, quite an interesting kind of low camera angle. So it really looks enormous, even though in reality basilisk lizards aren't very big at all. But I digress. The, what really made me think of Wildlife on One while I was watching um, Walking with Beast is, is that Unlike, say, the live series, which is sort of, has a sort of general overall documentary feel to it, this one really follows a central um, animal character, if you like. So, for example, the Basilosaurus episode, um, whale killer, follows 
a female Basilosaurus as she struggles to find enough to eat as the currents and the um, temperature of the water changes due to climate change. And so she's, so she's got to, uh, she's pregnant and she's got to provide enough food for, not only for herself but for the, obviously the um, whale fetus inside her. And it's quite exciting. I mean, there's a lovely scene at the beginning where she um, grabs a shark and there's this beautiful sequence which I think they probably got from um, watching modern whales like so orcas. And it's this brilliant scene where she grabs one of the sharks by the tail and sort of smashes it into the water. It's fantastic and really exciting. And that that is a really enjoyable episode. Probably one of my favourites. Um, it has um, another one of my childhood phobias, actually, this particular series, the Antelodont, um, or as they're also called, Hell Pigs. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen what one of these looks like, but they're the absolutely disgusting. Um, I say, I was going to say, um, almost kill a warthog is probably a, a interesting way of describing them they're basically like really 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 big pigs um but they were primarily carnivorous unlike modern pigs which obviously are omnivores but generally speaking um eat more vegetation than they do meat and they just looked absolutely disgusting and i remember being quite frightened of them when i was younger um this is probably about the age of 10 i should think and they they just looked absolutely horrible um yeah i think after those two events my favorite episode is probably the one with the mammoths in it um again this follows a sort of family of mammoths as they wander across on their migration from north to south and then back again and it's unusual for all this unusual at this point in the series because it actually had human actors in it um playing both modern homo sapiens and also neanderthals um obviously when they play neanderthals um the people had um, prosthetics on their features so they had like you know bigger noses but it looks quite good i mean you can sort of tell that they've got prosthetics on um the neanderthal actors because obviously with prosthetics you means you don't get the same kind of facial expressions as you do with obviously you know a human actor without them but it looks good and unlike say a lot of sort of cgi replications of neanderthals i always think they look a bit weird you can't almost imagine them actually existing i mean you can understand how earlier um paleontologists came to the conclusion that Neanderthals were like these horrible, you know, cavemen with big clubs and went round, you know, and they were primitive men, um, whereas we now know that they're actually, you know, similar intelligence to modern humans, they could have done all the things modern humans can do, and they were had this very intelligent, interesting culture, which we're only just beginning to discover. And you can see from a lot of other examples of Neanderthals in similar kinds of um, I don't know what you call them, see a documentary series, how people got that idea, because I often think that replications of them with things like CGI often make them look quite brutish, they have or big foreheads and really big features, and you can't imagine them sort of, you know, actually conveying emotions with those kind of features, but with this, because obviously they've got real human beings, or modern human beings, um, do we acting, it looks quite good, um, and the scene where they actually hunt mammoths at night, I know that generally speaking now, I think most paleontologists reckon that actually mm, the idea that um, Neanderthals or indeed humans generally uh, force mammoths off cliffs is probably not entirely true they might have done it sometimes but it's more likely that they actually they were would have stood at the top of the cliffs and sort of funnel the mammoths down into the, the, sort of the valleys and then attack them from above because it makes more sense doesn't it I mean would you really go up to a mammoth even if it was on the edge of a cliff and try and scare it off over the edge of the cliff I mean even at night with fire it would be quite dangerous I mean I know Neanderthals didn't carry out risk assessments but even so it would you know be quite frightening and um, much better to stand on the top of a cliff a long way away from a mammoth or at least a bit of a way away from a mammoth and throw rocks at it and spears because you know that feels a lot safer and but even so even with that kind of small discrepancy and I really enjoyed it. It's very, very evocative with this, all the uh, mammoths trumpeting and those humans. It looks like it's being filmed in night vision. And it was one of the few bits where it actually felt like there was a camera back in the past. In the other episodes, it felt a bit more, because it has that kind of drama element where it's following a particular animal and you're seeing, you know, their kind of world through their story. It felt a bit more like a, a drama because you kind of felt it's very unlikely that this animal is going to die by the end of it. Of course, that did happen in uh, Walking with Dinosaurs with the Hatsigopteryx, so it was impossible, but it did feel a bit more kind of, you know, child-focused in a way. It felt um, less grown up, but with that other last one, 
that felt suddenly again a bit like a sort of return to um the walking with dinosaurs life format where they actually it felt more like they had a camera team in the past despite the rubbish cgi which you almost forgot about after a while so i really liked that episode because it no it does follow the sort of the mammoth family but instead of going into too much detail about which mammoth is which which they could have done um if it was more like a, a camera crew following a group of mammoths and then the seeing the world they encounter as you go through it so yeah i did enjoy walking with beasts probably didn't enjoy it as much as i remembered and in fact um weirdly and rather surprisingly i enjoyed i think walking with dinosaurs more which was i was a surprise i didn't expect to i, m I remember it being totally the other way around when i was a child but yeah i did enjoy it and it's a very good series and it obviously follows on with a lot of things that they found that were successful with walking with dinosaurs and they just replicated them with you know a different time period in human well, in civilization generally so yeah that was my review of walking with beasts thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye